turn it on. I'd love to look at you. When, yeah. uh, they, they definitely later. do. Yeah. Some of them, the internet connection may not allow, but but if sure. uh, if possible, they will do that. Okay. Sure. So okay. let's uh, let's start by having a couple of the companies uh, sure. to pitch. This time is a different pitch. They're not going to, to have a whole uh, uh, discussion about a product. They're going to be the discussion of what they have done very fast, like a minute is like mm-hmm. an elevator pitch. And then they're going to talk about their ideas about marketing. And this mm-hmm. time does not need to be very cohesive. The mm-hmm. expectation is not that they have a very good idea. It's just the first week. Sure. Any yeah. ideas you have and we want to share is good. We mm-hmm. go over a couple of companies and if you can have a discussion with them would be good. Then we open for QA and everybody can ask questions about yeah. effective marketing and we take it from there. Sure. Fantastic. Absolutely. So yeah. Stephanie, who, is the, uh, who are the companies today are going to do? I thought there are a couple of them, correct? Um, so in the sheet, we have Samurai Velocity, Jagan. And I don't see it in the sheet, but I believe we had also uh, mentioned Creative Technology Team as well. Okay, very good. So let's Jagan, please go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hi everyone. I am Jagan. I am a seventh grade student from India. And my company name is Samurai Velocity. We have team members from India, Kenya, New Zealand, Nigeria, and Rwanda. We focus on solving SDGs with the velocity and agility of a samurai. And you can know more about our team on our website. Right now, our solution to the world's biggest problem that is climate change is to convert coal power plants, the main source of CO2, into bamboo biomass plants. It basically works in this way. The the bamboo is planted in the coal collection area where the coal is stored. Half of the bamboo is used for electricity generation and it has a carbon neutral impact because the amount of carbon dioxide bamboo absorbed is released back during electricity production. The other half of the bamboo is used for uh, other products like furniture, limestone, fabric, and many more, where the CO where the CO2 is locked in such products. We have finalized the idea, and right now we are on the marketing phase. So our marketing strategy is a one-minute inspirational video. If I let me first talk about one of the most inspirational videos in history. So one, two of the most inspirational videos is the one by Apple called Think Different. It was a really good ad campaign where they told that uh, people who think different can also change the world. There was another campaign released by Nike, Nike, who uh, where their motto was "Find Your Greatness." They just wanted to convey this message that anyone could be a great athlete and they did not have to be rich or did not have to have any caste or any, uh, they did not have to be great people for that. They needed to have the skill to be uh, great, uh, to be successful in life. Now, what do these videos have in common is that they both inspire people uh, about this idea and they remind us that anyone can change the world. We also have a similar idea. Our idea is to tell the world that anyone can change the world. And by showing how a common plant can save humanity, we can bring a huge impact on people. What, let me tell you about its impact. What this marketing video we are going to be creating is going to have an impact. So it will inspire people about this idea that anyone can change the world. And especially in countries where bamboo is commonly found, such as India, Kenya, China, etc., people will be amazed that such a uh, commonly available plant can change the world in such a huge way. And we will convey this message uh, that anyone can change the world by joining our team. Our plan is to convey this message to everyone through social media to inspire the youth of the world. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you liked our idea. 
Fantastic, Jagan. That was fantastic. Yeah. Lakshmi, please go ahead. No, no, really great. I mean, how do, do we do? Can I give feedback now or should oh, we listen to both? No, no, no. Of... Right now, do, do the conversation and anything you like on this one. Okay. So, um, first of all, uh, amazing, uh, Jagan. Really, really fantastic. See, you took, I timed you, you took three and a half minutes to do this. Okay. So, first, let me go through the things that you hit the nail on the head. I mean, where you are absolutely right is there are two things out of this one is about the magic of bamboo the other one is about creating a video because your strategy is to create this one minute video and make it go viral you know so these are your two things you want people to remember out of this okay so let me give you a couple of suggestions of how this three and a half minute you have can bring you can bring it down to two and a half minutes or even two minutes there are some things you can do one is when you give any talk the first sentence has to be grabbing okay your first sentence is i am jagan and this is the name of my company and this is what let the whoever is introducing you do that because when you go on stage and give a talk okay somebody is introducing you, let them do that. You need to come on at the beginning of this and say, I found, uh, and this is just a suggestion, you need to think of whatever the sentence is. It's like, let me tell you about the most magical plant on this earth and how that is going to solve the entire SDG. You know, like have a dramatic statement like that up front because it grabs people's attention, right? To say, you, you know, this is, you, you know, you, you think you can't end hunger. Let me tell you about a magical plan that can do it. You know, you think we all think that climate change cannot happen. Let me tell you how it can all because of one magical plant, you know, something of that sort. And, the, and to do this, we have kids from, uh, you know, all seventh and ninth graders from 10 different countries who are coming here to make this happen. So this is a global movement. The minute you say that you have people's attention, like, oh, oh, what is he talking about? And then you can say, I am Jagan. I'm the CEO of this company. I'm a seventh grader and I have, you know, I have blah, blah. These are all my, whatever, you know. Actually, that's not even necessary. Your story, that two minutes you're on stage, people's attention has to be on, what is this magical plan? So now first you establish I have this magical plant. This is what the properties of bamboo, that's why it's great. So you go through your technology thing, that's okay. And then how are we gonna talk about this to the world? We decided it's gonna be through a one minute video. Now you spent almost a minute on saying what the Nike video is, what the Apple video is. You don't need to explain to people. Here are two iconic companies that build billions of dollars of brands through very short advertisements. That's what we want to do. So now you're putting yourself in the league of Apple and Nike on step one. You're saying, I'm, I'm as good as them in a very subtle way. You don't need to explain that Nike did this ad, the greatness ad, and this is what it was about. You don't need to explain to people. To say, you know, Apple become more than a computer company and Nike became more than a shoe company by positioning themselves with an idea larger than themselves. And that's what we are going to do. We are going to tell the whole world, blah. And then your title is beautiful. You know, everything about the video, the visuals is fantastic. You know, it has a little playfulness. It's fun, yet it is serious. So it's fantastic. I mean, it's and anything, any feedback I'm giving you, is only for 5% of your presentation. You did the hard work of 95%, which is the right content and the right delivery. I love the way you presented. So to summarize, my only thing is start off much more dramatic, like grab people's attention by the first sentence, okay? And then spend less time explaining someone else's video, explain more, to spend more time explaining your video. Like, I would like to 
have people from 20 different countries come talk about blah, blah, whatever it is. This is going to be a video that will be global. This will be something, you know, spend 30 seconds on how you see this happening. But it's fantastic. I mean, I can't tell you. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I just would love to hire all of you guys to work on my company. You know, I mean, it's <laughs> really, really fantastic. You know. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your advice. Sure, sure. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, uh, Lakshmi, I'm afraid that soon they will hire us. It would be reversed. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I'm telling them to please. <laughs> so, Jagan, one question. What would be the environment that you can make an amazing animation the way that you like to build that 30 second? Do you know that an environment that you're already familiar that you can make any animation you want? Yeah, What's it's that? the Polya platform. Yeah. So think about how you build everything about that video in Polya. Okay. And and let's make sure that you uh, uh, make let's make sure that hey sorry whoever is not talking can you please mute yourself yeah. so there's some and Stephanie can you mute others please okay. so so make sure you're gone leverage the fact that there is no limit in how you want to show things you you are you and your your company right now is so expert in showing any effect there that you can perfect that video. If you need a part library, partner, either do it yourself or partner with the other companies that make part library. To have the part library is that you want to make this one 30 second to be better, more effective than the Apple video. And you guys and gals can do that. You know, your, your target is not only do that, is to go beyond that. Just think about it. And this is an area that all of you that work on the libraries can now come in. What library elements you bring in that make that magical animation, the magical storytelling, okay? The only other thing I would say is that everything that Amir talked about and that you talked about, Jagan, also are really, uh, have to be subservient to the story. You know, you need to work with people who write really well. Maybe you can get somebody from the ad world to come consult, you know, help you guys out. So the story has to be really, really beautiful. Uh, the lines have to be beautiful. So I always tell people that get the story right first, you know, and then figure out how you can implement it. So when you think about the two iconic ads that you talked about, forget the visuals, just listen to the a narrative. It is powerful. The narrative is powerful. The words, are, every word is chosen very, very carefully. Every word is chosen carefully. So my suggestion is take the time if it's a one minute video, come up with the script for the one minute video first. And then say, this is where I use text. This is where I use animation. This is where I use voice, whatever, you know, then everything else becomes subservient to that. And the reason I say this is that no matter what you do, you're making a film, you're writing, a, uh, you're making a presentation, uh, you are trying to convince your parents to do X, Y, Z, whatever it is, you have to get your story right. You have to say, I have one minute. And in this one minute, I want them to walk away feeling ABC. And this is the script. So every word should be thought through. Is it a poem? Is it a prose? Is it a story? You know, however you want to do it, and this is why I just say that, you know, in India, we make over a thousand movies a year. You know this, right? I mean, you know, it's like the number is amazing. And in US, they, in Hollywood, they don't make that many movies. But Hollywood combined makes at least 20, 30 times more revenue than all of Bollywood put together. And why is that? Okay. Because in Hollywood, everybody, 
is a slave to the story. The story comes first. It is thought through, it's divided. There are amazing writers that sit behind and write the story and decide exactly what needs to be told. And then they get the actors and they get the director and you, know, you first buy the story and then you get everything else. So my suggestion is get your script first. You know, and you should read it and say, okay, it'll happen in one minute. And then see who are the actors you need to get to do this. Some come from your animation, some maybe voices of all of you, some maybe voice of somebody famous. I mean, you just then decide everything else is secondary. Get your story right first. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the suggestion. Yeah. Fantastic. I appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Lakshmi. So let's go to the next one, Stephanie. The creative technology team. I'm sorry, the super capable team. Um, okay. Can you share your uh, camera also? Can you turn on camera? Um, I have. <laughs> uh, okay, um, so hello, I'm the CEO of Super Cable Team. My name is Ava. We have people from the US and Azerbaijan and um, our members are from second to ninth grade. And we currently have two products. So our products are the character library and workshops. So if you don't know what a uh, library is in yet, basically a library in Polyup is basically the scene of Polyup. It's what makes Polyup so important because you can simulate anything using these library parts. And currently we are working on a library that um, embodies any human um, presence or human interaction because you can build humans using this library. Okay, so this is basically uh, our library creating that we created to make to give people access to customize people and avatars inside their machines. And a machine polyup is basically just something, it's, it's a simulation, um, I suppose. So we also have one other thing. It's called, uh, we call them workshops, and they're basically just, um, they're basically just where you teach um, polyup to outside organizations. And we basically have two workshops that we are currently working on. So the first one is STEMHER, and it is already in progress. Um, it is non STEM is a nonprofit that focus on, focuses on bringing STEM to young girls, and we're, we're making a four-week workshop with 10, uh, on average 10 kids ages 9 to 15 in each session, and they're from six countries. And basically, we have already done many of these week, uh, weekly workshops, and we're hoping to maybe even create more, but that's what we're doing for STEM Her. There's also a second one. This is called GSV Startup Bootcamp. And GSV Bootcamp is a program hosted by the VC, GSV, about companies, growth mindset, and more. So GSV is a is a basically a venture capitalist company that is also hosting this bootcamp. And we are hoping to using our contacts, Anita Rahman and more, we are hoping to join our workshops with their bootcamp and give them something that they lack, which is the ability to um, to give this this lesson, this um, this understanding about companies to not only the current um, the current people that are giving it to high schoolers, but more the K through 12 spectrum. And that's where Polyup comes in. That's why we're making Polyup workshops because the beauty of Polyup is basically that you can make this for any grade. You can make this from K through 12 and it would be all the same because how customizable and how, um, um, how Polyup works in general. And basically what we're doing right now is we are, we are, currently going, I believe in the spring, we will be launching this, but we're in contact with both GSV and Polya. And with SCT, we are basically, I guess, a liaison between them. And we are hoping to host this workshop. And we're also eventually going to get other companies in this as well. And 
Um, last but not least, we have marketing. So we're making two one minute videos using the Polya platform to tell the story of each product, but these recordings are currently in the process of being made. We haven't actually finished them yet, so I can't show them right now. And that is it. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Great. Sorry, I'm just making a note. Okay. So let me ask you a first question is, uh, are you a separate company than Polyup or are you talking for Polyup? So we are a separate company than Polyup, but one of our main goals is um, is basically the our workshops. We're actually working with Polyup to create these workshops. We are using the Polyup platform. More so for the GSV part, we are working more with Polyup on that. For the STEM part, we were simply using their platform. And we are actually a separate company than Polyup who's actually kind of partnering with Polyup to create this boot camp for GSV. So, um, see, the thing is, in your presentation, I was not very clear what your company is about. Okay. So you need to start off by saying, if, so let me ask you a few questions clarifying. By the way, I just have to say one thing with all of you is that you have a certain conviction, you have a certain confidence, I don't have that even now, what you have in seventh grade. So I just have to congratulate you with, uh, uh, you know, not being afraid to say what's out there. So really, really your, your presentation, your confidence is really fantastic. So I just want you to remember whatever I'm saying is only to make it better. You're already there at 80%. I don't need to teach you. Uh, I don't need to say anything to you. So Lovely. please take it with that. This is not to be harsh on you. This is just to say, how can we make you at 150%? Okay, so that's where I come in with my observations. So just like I told Jagan, I want you to start with who you are right off the bat. We are a company that develops libraries and workshops for companies all over the world, you know, whatever. Because you're talking so much about Polyup, it seems like you're a division of Polyup. You need to make it present. Polyup is a tool, is one of the things you're using, but that's not the end for you. So watch out how many times you say Polyup in the presentation because people might get confused. Okay, first tell me what your company is. So if you're doing two things, you said you build a library and also do workshops. You need to, so the first thing, as I said, is very clearly say what your company is about. What, what need are you solving? So let me ask you, why do you need to build, why do I need your library at all? I'm a company, why? Why do I need your library? Why do I need a library? Um, basically because you can simulate whatever you want with that library with a human presence in it in, um, instead of simply just having a, um, a simulation devoid of any human presence. That's basically where you can actually create a new thing which our library fulfills the need of. Great. See, I didn't know that. Start with that to say in, in the previous economy, in the world so far, we had to get real people, we had to test on them, and we have to do this. It would have taken six months for us to do any prototype, etc. In today's world, you can create a library through which you can simulate so that you can find any answer you want for any question you have in your company very, very quickly. That's the point you want to establish. That's why libraries are important. And, you know, library is a beautiful image, by the way. It's a great, you know, to say that it is, we are giving you like every, I mean, it's sort of, you go to a library and you can find a book on anything possible. So we are creating a library where anything you need would be available so you can take it and simulate whatever you want. Ultimately, that's where I want to get to, okay? All right. And to make this happen, to know how to wander through this library and to find what you want where, we also do workshops. So create the relationship between the two. I'm creating this entire library, this magic kingdom I'm creating for you, where you can go find anything you want and be able to solve your problems through simulation instead of 
doing it in real life and waiting for a year or something of that sort. And to do that, we also do trainings. We also do workshops. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I'll make sure to connect that in the next. Yeah, month. that's fantastic. And then when you talk about the workshops, uh, you you said that age this, age that, etc. For this presentation, you not, don't need to go into that level of detail. You just need to say, I'm creating a library. I will do workshops where I will, uh, you know, address the needs of people from age six through 60. You know, like we'll do lots of different workshops. That's all you need to say. And you said that to do this, I will do a one minute video. And you also said, I don't know what's going to be in this video, right? You mm -hmm. don't need to say that. You can say, we will create a one minute video to show you how you can find everything you want and how you can. I actually do don't think I said that. Maybe oh, I thought toward the end, uh, no, I thought you I said, okay. That. Yeah, okay. I didn't say that. I think you must have misheard me. Okay. So probably I did. So I'm just okay. telling you my perception, which is my reality right now. Okay. That I, I heard you say that it's a one minute video and we don't know exactly what's there in this video. Oh, we'll come back to you. I actually said that we're actually in the process of making it. Yeah. That's so right. what I'm saying is that when you're presenting, they don't need to know you're in the process of making okay. it or anything. You can just say, we'll do a one minute video. Okay. That will show you how all this uh, can come true. That's it. That's all you need to say. Because again, see how what I heard versus what you said. The minute you said, I don't have something, I hear it. You don't need to tell in your presentation what you don't have. You have so much more than what you don't have. So you don't need to talk about what you don't have. So it's fantastic. I mean, the see, you are like a, the difference between what Jagan is doing and what you're doing. There are two different types of companies. You're going to be a platform that everyone can use, right? So you're, for you, you're, the whole world is your oyster. So you can just say that that's what we are trying to build. And it's fantastic. I'm so glad you guys actually chose two very different companies because the way you have to market is very different. Uh, he's, his marketing has to be, his opening is about, you want to solve climate, this is how you do it. Whereas you are saying, you want to have access to amazing tool shed, you have it, no matter who you are. So it's really, really beautiful, I think, what you're doing. It's just, you, you when you mention poly up a lot of times, I, I get confused with you working only with poly up. You're giving poly up as an example. So when you do that, my suggestion is take another company also and just give it as an example and say, if you were doing this, we could have done this. If you were a, you know, oil, company we can do this for you in like that just give some examples you know but it's fantastic I mean I love the ideas I think uh, the company ideas themselves I think you took a while to come here all of you uh, just the ideas for the companies themselves are truly truly amazing and uh, uh, and again as I said earlier you only need 10 20 percent of finesse you know uh, the the hard part always is the content and you have the content. So for both of you, I say the same thing. Your opening statement has to be grabbing. Just come in and say, do you want to have access, no matter who you are, which company you are, which you know uh, sector you may be, do you want to have access to simulate scenarios without having to do it in real time? That's what we are creating. You know, just make a big and end with a big statement also. And we are going to make a one minute video that gives you a walk through the world's best library and how you can be ready to face the future using those tools. You know, something like that. Just make it uh, dramatic and not a lie. Your, your, your dramatic, it can't be a lie, but uh, something dramatic. But fantastic. I love the confidence both of you have in presenting this and how you have acknowledged how many people are involved. I think that's very, very important. While you are the face of it, there's a whole bunch of people working on it and you need to acknowledge them. So you both did it really. Uh, that's way more than many CEOs do, you know. So really, congratulations. All right. Thank you for your feedback. Right. 
Sure, sure, sure. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's, do we have another one, Stephanie, or we are done for the companies? Oh, we're done for the companies. Okay, fantastic. Lakshmi, so please take the floor. Yeah, sure. I actually will talk for, I'm watching my time. It's, uh, we have 12 more minutes. Okay. So, or 11 more minutes. I will talk exactly for three minutes. And then I really want questions from you. So I really wanted to be interactive. Uh, so please be ready because otherwise if there's a dead silence, I'll worry about it. So I'm giving you three minute notice right now. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that uh, I have worked in many different sectors. I worked in technology. I worked in venture capital. I worked in philanthropy, you know, various things. And what I found after I worked for 20 plus years, when I look back, what I found is that the one thing that is important is learning how to tell your story in the most real, authentic way. And uh, so I always say there is only three things you need to remember when you're telling a story, you know. Number one, I cannot, you know, stress enough on it is be authentic to who you are as a person. This has got nothing to do with the product or anything, who you are as a person. We've had people who have very bad accents. We have people who can't speak English very well. We tell them, don't try to be somebody else. Be who you are, be authentic. So number one, be yourself. Dress the way you want, talk the way you, I mean, do what is real for you. Don't worry about, I don't worry about, oh my God, will you all think it's weird? I'm wearing a bindi or this or that. This is me. So be authentic. And the second thing is be very crisp, you know? So no matter what you want to say, think of how fewer words I can use. And also in every conversation, people remember only one thing. So we feel that if I'm telling a story, I just want you to know my entire life story in three minutes. So let me talk really fast so I can tell you 20 things. No, if you have three minutes, you can only tell one thing and think of what is that one thing I can tell well. Don't try to say everything you want in that one minute. So when you do your one minute videos, this is very important. What is the one message I want out of it? What is the one emotion I want out of it? I want it to be a factual video. I want it to be an emotional video. I want it to, whatever, crisp. And the third thing is you need to be truthful. You cannot lie. You can make things a little better, be more dramatic, but truthfulness is the most important. So I've given you the three tenets of storytelling for me in an acronym, ACT. A is for authentic, C is for crisp, and T is for truthful. If these three things are there, everything else will fall in place. So that's all I have to say. I've been, you know, I have worked with people to tell over, you know, thousands of stories and in thousands of events. And it's amazing when you tell a great story and action follows. And the purpose of telling a story is an action out there. It, the action could be other person made, felt great at the end of it. It could tell an inspirational story. Other person wrote a check to you. you know, what is the action you want out of it? You have to be very clear before you tell the story. That's why act is very important. If it is about getting money from the other person, the story has to be told very differently if you want to leave them inspired and no action necessary. So. That's all I have to say. The story, the story, the story is the most important thing. Everything else is a slave to it. So get your story right, no matter who you are. So with that, just, you know, as I said, see, now we have seven minutes. So please ask your question. Uh, are, I think, are they in chat? Should I look at Yes, chat? no, so they will... They will... Uh, they will uh, turn on their camera and then they will ask uh, live. Perfect. So yeah. who, who wants to go ahead? Is there any questions, comments, any crazy ideas any of you have about how, what are the ideas you have for your company to actually start to make a buzz? 
Um, actually, and, Jagan reached out to me and wanted to ask a question. Jagan, I think Jagan you should go Rush. ahead and turn on your camera. Yeah, yeah. Just ask. You guys turn on your cameras and ask. Yeah, I had a question. Would it be possible to have that uh, one minute video featured in one of the channels like the Inc, uh, Inc YouTube channel so that it could have a bigger reach? Could be, absolutely. I mean, actually, it's a good thing you're saying and you should think of your thing being in as many channels as possible because you're not a media company. You're not trying to build your own channel. So you should, of course, you can send it to us and our editorial team will decide uh, decide that. You should reach out to every media channel. You should reach out to every news channel. You should reach out to Z and NBC, CBS, everyone and say, where can this go? And actually a lot of media companies have a certain percentage of their time. They have to dedicate to community projects. So for, you know, so you can pitch it as one of those and say, this is a community project to encourage the youth. Can you feature it? You should, if you're in, uh, you're in Hyderabad, you should go to Inadu, you should go to uh, Z, you should go to everyone and say, give me 30 seconds and play this in one of your ad spaces because they all have to have a certain percentage of ad space dedicated to community work. Position it as that way. This is about solving SDG, blah, and this is an idea. As a community project, feature it. You should prepare a presentation for each media company why they should feature this in their company and send it to all of them. Okay, thanks, okay. I'll do sure. that. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, Nuala, go ahead, please. Can you turn on your camera also? Yeah. Um, hello, my name is Noel. I am in Samurai Velocity. And my question is kind of unrelated, but um, why do you think some people might think something is bad even though it has good intentions? Is it the way that we present it? Is it the people who are presenting it? Or is it just how people might view some things based on what they've experienced? Sure. Sure. See, there are two things. As I said uh, earlier, perception is reality. You may think you are saying something, but the way the other person heard may be different. Okay. So as a storyteller, as a person presenting, you have to always make sure the other person is hearing it the same way as you are telling it. You may say that, um, um, you may look at somebody and say that you should eat healthy food they may hear it as you're saying I'm fat and that's why I should eat healthy food, right? So you just are responsible for how the other person hears your message also, not just saying the right message, how the other person hears it. The second is there are some people who no matter what you say, they will see it negatively. You know, I say that in the world, there are and people and but people. The and people are, you tell them something and they say, wow, that's a great idea. And let's see how this can happen. And then you, at the end, you may say it won't happen. But and there are some people who are like, yeah, this sounds great, but you will never be able to make it because you're five years old. You know, your job in this world is separate the and people and but people. And there will be some people who will see it negatively and you have to say too bad and just keep going where you are. And if they are the and people and somehow they are not hearing it right, then it's your responsibility to make sure they hear it right because they are the ones who are going to help you achieve your goal. So you have to know who to ignore and who to pursue. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Fantastic. Great. Uh, uh, who is, okay, Ava, go ahead. You raise your hand. Um, so I just have one question about like the previous question you talked about with Jag Jagan. Uh -huh. You said something like um, community service, I guess, that um, yeah. that uh, media and companies have to do. But do Facebook, Snapchat, and like things like that, do they have something similar? Because if that's true, that could uh, get a lot of reach. Oh, yeah. All media companies do. You just need to find the right. You have to ask them because even Facebook, for example, uh, they have a certain, uh, 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 what do you call those, uh, ad hours set aside only for community things. So they have a nonprofit division, so all of them. But you are, if you're a for-profit company, you can't qualify for that. So you have to position yourself differently and say that, hey, I am a 
uh, high school kid who is doing this and to promote youth to uh, be, become more entrepreneurs, give me that community time. So you have to position yourself differently, but they all do. They all do have a certain amount of uh, things set aside for community. Right. And Facebook, for example, gives credits at a much cheaper rate for nonprofits, but there you have to be a nonprofit. So if, a, if they charge $1, say, for boosting an ad, they charge 10 cents for boosting an ad if you're a nonprofit. So they all have things like this for a, either a nonprofit company or a big idea, you know, like, a, so you have to position yourself as a big idea as a nonprofit, you know, you know, how is it going to benefit the world? Then they do have separate budgets. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, I never knew about that. That's actually a great thing we could do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have one more question. Sure. So I don't want to take up too much of your time, but can the hub have you as an advisor? Because um, the people before us in the presentation, we also asked to be advisor and we we want to ask to see not too much of your time, but just yeah. um, it would be a great thing if you could if we could have you as our advisor to help us out. So yeah, I, I See, the thing is, for me to be an advisor, I'm a very expensive resource. You have to make it worth my time. So um, I'm, we are already, I mean, I'm, 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 and you know, and I mean it in the serious, more serious sense. You have to think of when you start your companies, when you make somebody an advisor, you have to also think of what, what's in it for them. Okay. So yeah. if I'm an advisor to this, what does that mean? You have to think through about it and tell me, uh, because you're doing this, I'll give you a percentage of my company or I, I'm not asking you for that right now. I'm just saying that when you put your advisory board, when you ask somebody to advise you, you have to go to them with, this is what you will get out of it. The reason I'm working with Polyup is that it obviously it appeals to a larger sense that I have of why is this important? And I already am working and we are taking this to India. My company is working in this India. So I am an advisor already. Um, but I'm saying when you ask in general, in the world, when you ask somebody to be an advisor, you have to be very clear what's in it for them because higher purpose is not always the case, you know, because I can have higher purpose in one thing or two things. I can't have higher purpose for too many things. So when you create your company, when you create your board of advisors, you have to think very strategically about what will you give them, you know? So that's very, very important. But I'm always available uh, and, uh, and Zore and Kamran and I have been friends for over 20 years and we are tied at the hip and uh, I adore what Amir is doing along with Zore. So I'm available for all of you and this is, the best gift you have given me is to allow me to talk to you for an hour. So I'm truly, truly thrilled. And I'd be happy to, I asked them, actually, they didn't even invite me. Ask Amir. I asked him, I said, why aren't you inviting me? No, so, no, no. It was our pleasure to have you. I'm just and kidding. I'm you. just kidding. I am here always. And I love, I love you all, what you're doing. And if we can get some of your stories to gain global significance, I'd be thrilled to do it. It's an honor. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So we have uh, Aisha. You raise your hand. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Aisha, and I'm from Azerbaijan. I'm the CEO of Technological Feature Startup. My question is: um, I always think that when uh, there is a meeting. I will not able to perform very well and I have to talk next time, but this time never comes because yes. I'm so excited. And um, what can I do to let go of my fears? Do I need to attend more meetings, webinars or how? Yeah, yeah. So I'm so glad you asked and I'm so glad you're actually a woman, Aisha, because there are two things I want to, talk about is and at the at the cost of overly uh, generalizing I will say that it's always women who think twice about putting their hand up than than men in general in the world so as a woman you have to push yourself harder than everybody else to speak up so when I say um it's open for questions and this I see this all I go to high schools and I go to colleges 
when I say ask questions, first of all, very few people ask questions, you know, in general, man, woman, doesn't matter because if all of us are afraid to put our hand up and say, oh my God, my question may be stupid or what. So first of all, inherently, doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, you don't want to be the first one to speak up because, you know, so the fear is I may not look smart. So first of all, everybody has to get rid of that because when someone says, ask questions you're getting the gift of their time and you should be greedy to catch it you should just say i want to i want you should be the first one to ask okay second thing that holds us back a lot of times is that as i said earlier maybe it's not a smart enough question because we want to look smart when we are out there we want to look all put together when we are out there but the fact is we are all imperfect we all ask stupid questions. I ask stupid questions all the time. You know, like I asked, uh, you know, when we were talking about the previous company, I didn't know, is it a library or is it this? It, you know, you should, there's nothing called stupid. I will tell you the number of times I have been in a tech company. I'm the only woman. I'm the only non-tech person in the room. And they say something and I don't understand what they're saying. And I put my hand up and say, what does that mean? And literally, you hear 20 people heave a sigh of relief because they all had the same question. They just didn't want to ask it. You know, so just assume if you have a question, others have the question also. So you have to, for you to be great in this world, the only thing you have to work with is the noise in your head. That's the only thing you have to work with. Because the minute you say, I want to ask a question, there's a noise that starts that, oh, do you really have a smart question? Do you really have to ask? Or oh, let the others ask. Looks like their questions are more important. Uh, do I really put, you know, just shut that voice down. When somebody opens a door, go flying through it. And I have to say to you, you know, the, the reality of the world is, you know, I may be criticized for saying this, the reality of the world is, as a woman, you have to try harder. This is the reality of the world. And it was, it was less harder now than it was in my generation, but still it'll be harder for you. So you need to get over your voice a lot faster than everybody else and go. I mean, look at you. You are the CEO of a company. You have people from so many um, countries working with you. You're building a great team. And... So don't be afraid to speak up. The world is waiting to hear your voice. You are devoiding them of an opportunity if you don't speak up. So just all of you need to think that way. If you're not speaking up, you're actually you know, creating negative energy in the world because your voices need to be heard. And don't hold yourself back. Oh, you, that person is much older. I can't say, you know, I'm in a meeting with people who know more than me. No. There is no situation where you cannot speak up. You should always speak up. And if others think you're stupid, it's their problem, not yours, because you know you're smart. Thank you very much. Sure. Fantastic. I can stay here as long as you want, but I want to be Bye. mindful <laughs> if you you guys have a time limit. And so if you have questions, ask, but I, I want to be mindful yeah. of your time. So I, I really appreciate Lakshmi. This was an amazing session. Uh, very illuminating and inspiring. Really appreciate that. Uh, they need to, uh, the, in some of the countries, it's very late. I know. I they know. need to transition to also, there's another call right now is going to be with them about the next step. Sure. So I want to thank you again. Uh, so I want to wrap up. I do want sure, to say ahead, a parting please. word. Go ahead, please. One thing I want to say, see, again, you should never end your talk without an action item. So my request to you for your action item is go to inktalks.com, I-N-K-T-A-L-K-S.com. Listen to a story. We work on, on a lot on the stories we put out there listen to a story and comment on it, what you thought about it. And the more you listen to stories, the more you will be able to tell your stories. So we have lots of stories out there. Just go and listen to it. That's what will make me happy. That's my request for you as I wrap up. And thank you so much for your time. As I said, you gave me the greatest gift you have, which is your time. 
And I really want to thank you for that. Fantastic. Really appreciate it. It was amazing. And uh, thank you for your time and all the inputs you provided, Lakshmi. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, -bye. Have a great day. Thank you. So uh, everybody here, uh, that was that was fantastic session. Uh, you you gals and guys did an amazing job in communication. I think we learned a lot, uh, and this was a very good segue to go to the next mode, which is the mode of 